I can't decide if I should breathe a sigh of relief because we finally had a direct, or if instead I should hold my breath for all of the awesome launches that await us in the second half of 2019. The big direct aired, Nintendo brought Mm -hmm. Their A game, their B game, we'll have to decide by the end of this video. But Gabe, it was definitely one heck of an awesome day. Expectations are very dangerous, and whether yours were met or you were left a little bit underwhelmed, honestly, for me, I'm going to say that this was a really fun day. It felt like a mini E3. You and I were texting back and forth throughout the day, and it felt awesome to finally have some more information now is it the information we wanted you know who knows that, that that's up in the air some of these dates are not what we expected them to be they're a little bit later but new games were shown zach it, it was fun i loved it and make sure to let us know what letter grade you would give this direct and why in the comments down below a plus d minus the whole range is at your disposal tell us what you'd give it and why yeah, I don't want to get in the debacle of what I dealt with of being 35,000 feet in the air while this all happened live and then having to wait for reception to come back so I could see it. We'll, we'll probably talk about that somewhere else, but it was really cool. A mini E3 of sorts, so much anticipation and so many games. So before we do anything else, Gabe, you get one pick, your absolute favorite thing from the day. All right. I've said this a million times this week. I have a Triforce tattoo, Zach. So yes. Link's Awakening being remade and brought over to the Nintendo Switch is going to be my pick. I actually really, really love that game. I don't know if you know this. Oh, you've played it a lot. Huh? You've played it a lot. Yes, I have. This is oh, cool. the, like the second or third most uh, Zelda game for, for me. It's like one of the only Zelda games that doesn't even take place in Hyrule. I love how different it is. Chronologically, it's after A Link to the Past, and that's my favorite game of all time. Koholint Island is, is a really cool location. The dungeons in this one are really awesome, and they get progressively harder. I love so many of the nightmare bosses in this one. The I know it looks like super cutesy, and it might not be the Zelda game that people want, but I'm all on board, personally. That's fantastic. I'll give you my Zelda thoughts, but first, I have to go all in on how they started. Super Mario Maker 2 being announced is amazing, and I loved, I loved the way they did it, right? Introducing slopes to let people know, like, hey, we're, we're stepping things up, and that was just the first of many. They then introduced elements from Mario 3D World, which I thought was so cool to see those brought across to a 2D space. There's so much, and so much more even beyond what you may have seen in the trailer. And, and Gabe, I know you made a full video discussing all of the new details, but the fact that it seems like there's going to be maybe some sort of co-op, there's all these different playable characters, the fact that they have found a way to, at least it looks like, really nicely migrate the level creation system over the Switch. It was one that we heard rumored, but we never knew if it was port or new. The fact that it's new, the fact that it's bringing so much awesome new, and the fact that this is going to be a game that keeps on giving. Think about how many Switch players there are. Yeah. Think about how many Switches are out there. Mario Maker on Wii U was oodles of fun. And now you have double, eventually triple, quadruple the amount of people making levels. It's going to be insane yeah i absolutely pointed that over and we're gonna get back to zelda you cut me off on zelda but let's talk about super mario maker 2 for a while because that's how the show started i freaked out a little bit when i first saw the cat suit because i said whoa wait are they gonna do 3d spaces somehow i, I started mm. just like freaking out but it ended it ended up not being the case we still just you know get the cat suit and we get elements of 3d uh, uh land you know being world world <laughs> land world hey there's a lot of these games come on come on Gabe but not everything can be handheld like Link's Awakening okay my bad all right so we get elements of that and that's really cool and so many of the additions look like they are going to be an absolute pain for the geniuses that end up making these levels I said this in the video that, that I made earlier talking about all the new additions the the amount of people that are going to have an opportunity to do the most insane things imaginable is going to be staggering because the Wii U wasn't much of a success, like you said earlier. So that that's one thing that I'm very, very excited for, Zach. The co-op thing that wasn't mentioned in the trailer. We didn't see it at all. But if you go to the website, you see Toadette in a cat suit. You see Luigi. You see Blue Toad. You see Mario. That indicates... They, they got two guys on the cover. Mario and Luigi are both on the cover. And yeah, that might be just for two, but... No, yeah. To Toad and, and Blue Toad being there for me all but solidifies that co-op action is going to be in this game. <laughs> so then how does it happen, Zach? If you fail, we both fail? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how they're going to do it, but I have to point out the secret feature of Super Mario Maker 2 that no one is talking about. 
The Koopa car. What the heck is this Koopa doing in this like Uncharted esque little Jeep vehicle? It, are there going to be vehicles in the game? Is that just a goofy shot for the website? But what the heck is that? Yeah. Oh, you, you touched on it very quickly, and you know how my mind goes all over the place. The UI, how they were able to do solve yeah, with so, the wheels. Yeah, they solved the problem of not having two screen with these wheels, and, and for me, that's genius. Like it's like simple. Like I'm sure anyone could like, could have like thought of it really, but for me it's a genius the simplicity of it is what makes it so so cool i love the ui of it all and that was one of the bigger questions for mario maker for me on switch and same for you where you said hey like that game like inherently needed two screens like how do you solve that it was super simple you put wheels on there so kudos to them for figuring out a nice way to do it the biggest kudos in my mind is the fact that they made it feel very fresh and that they're incorporating so many cool elements that are bridging the gap between 2D and 3D. It's releasing this June. It probably is going to be right after E3. They love to do it. They did it with ARMS. They did it with Mario Tennis Aces. It's going to then be a big part of their E3 show floor presence and then drop. But it's awesome that it's coming that soon. I mean, it's still four months away, which is a lot. And at some point, we'll talk about all the things that weren't there and what the heck Nintendo is doing until E3. But for now, that's a really exciting one. And let's touch back on Link's Awakening a little bit. I, at first blush game... I hate to be this person for you, but I was disappointed. The fact that it is not a new 2D Zelda capitalizing on what Link Between Worlds did or taking Link's Awakening and then doing what Link Between Worlds did to Link to the Past, I was bummed. Now, I will say that your enthusiasm, your excitement, how much you love this OG game has me hopeful. The fact that there's like chain chomps and goombas, very cool. And I personally, I love the art style. I think it looks so good. It reminds me of... If you remember, like, the old school Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Frosty the Snowman, like, those old VHS tape shows. Yeah. That's what it looks like. I just, for me, it'll be new because I didn't play Link's Awakening, but I just feel weird about it being, like, Nintendo's version of a modern era remake. You loved Resident Evil 2 on other platforms. That's sort of that a, is true. an equivalent. This is even more of, a, more of an upgrade because this was older. This came out for the Game Boy Color in 1998, Zach. December of 1998. Almost wow. 1999. That's when I played it for the first time. Right around 99, 2000. I, I loved my Game Boy Color. And this is a game that I took with me everywhere. So I have the nostalgia factor to, to play into this. And, you know, I, I get a little bit more into the Zelda lore than you do, but this is the game that directly precedes my favorite game of all time. The gameplay is really cool. They seem to clean up a lot of the UI from, from the Game Boy Color and, you know, the old um, Game Boy version by just, like, removing it completely. In the old ones, you see, like, what weapon and stuff you're holding on the bottom. And in the gameplay we see for this one, you don't see that. So just modernized in little ways like that. And, you know, if you look at the graphics side by side, it is a complete, complete transformation. Now, the dungeons are probably going to be the same. Bosses are going to be the same. But I also think they're going to add a few things here and there because... I hope so. Yeah, like, if it ends up being a full price $60 game, which we expect, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. It, this is one of the... <laughs> If it's $60, it's going to be the shortest uh, $60 Zelda game ever. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Well, and I just, I just feel like, look at how much new, fresh Breath of the Wild did. Look at how much new, fresh Link Between Worlds did, like mixing up the, the dungeon order and giving you the, you know, the, the 2D, 3D mechanic. So for this to just be a straight Game Boy port with, you know, it's not a port. graphics. It's a remake. Okay, it's a remake. Sorry. That just feels weird. So I hope that there's more lurking beyond what we saw today you know there's no month it's just 2019 it joins the rest of the 2019 gang um it is very cool though like what i thought about we got a mario and a zelda in a direct yeah bookending this direct and nintendo has in the past liked to extrapolate and expand at e3 rather than reveal but they still will have some stuff at e3 yeah okay let's not talk they about that i just want to get no, your okay, thoughts okay, okay. i, I want to get your yeah. thoughts on something very quickly you didn't yeah. know this and i didn't know that you didn't know this Goombas and Chain Chomp. I had no idea. Yeah, like that, that's. I was like, they're finally doing the crossover of my dreams. <laughs> no, apparently I'm just, uh, I'm not educated. Yeah, your reaction to that was so cool to me. My uh, my next game that I want to touch on here is Box Boy and Box Girl. And it's a small one, but it, I think it's a, a monumental moment for the Switch because. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> Are you laughing at the, the, the momentous nature of Box Boy and Box Girl? <laughs> I'm not. Just like your phrasing was like, whoa. <laughs> well, it, it, okay. Nintendo has published games on the eShop. But this, I think, starts to signal an era where they can start doing much more of that and bringing notable franchises to the eShop. Snipperclip's obviously a great game that was a new property. Um, 
Box Boy, Box Girl, maybe it's not a popular property, but it's a very cool one. And it has me hopeful that the Switch will start to integrate things that the 3DS got onto the eShop. And even if it's things like, you know, Mario uh, versus Donkey Kong, maybe eventually we get like a Rhythm Heaven, even like a Picross. I think that would be so awesome. And so to me, this signals the beginning of like, okay, all systems go on the Nintendo eShop game front. Also, I love that this has co-op. That's just the thing everywhere on Switch. 270 levels, April 26th. It's something before E3, Gabe. Yep. This is like one of the only things uh, before E3. Your excitement for Box Boy makes me excited for Box Boy. And, and Box yeah. Girl now. And Box Girl. Let's let's include them. But while we're on the top of, uh, of eShop, Zach, let's just get it out of the way. Tetris 99 Battle Royale on Nintendo Switch exclusively. That based. was so, so weird. <laughs> hey, Nintendo Switch Online members were able to get it, like, free. That like that, right. that was cool. That's cool. That was a perk. I mean, they said they wanted to incentivize getting to the Nintendo Switch Online. Boom. This is how you do it, baby. <laughs> Everyone's imagining a Splatoon Battle Royale, some Nintendo awesome Smash Bros-esque Battle Royale. It's Nintendo wants to give you Tetris Battle Royale. I'm bad at Tetris. <laughs> I am bad at Tetris as well, but we will have to check that out. Um, one thing I thought that was really weird, the way that Smash was handled in the Direct. No gameplay for Joker, a big to-do about version 3.0 with zero details. It's a secret. And just, hey, it'll be done by the end of April. Like, just a really weird moment of the Direct, I thought. It's Sakurai... AF is, is how I'm going to describe it. Sakurai kind of works up uh, until like the very last minute on these things. Uh, we know that historically that's sort of the way he maneuvers. I don't know that Joker's like super done. Uh, so in my dreams at this point, we get Joker, the new stage and the new music without even knowing what they are. And they just throw them out there mm. and we're pleasantly just surprised by it. That's what I want. I don't want to see Joker gameplay anymore. Just wait. Do you think the fact that Smash Bros. 2.0 introduced some new elements like multiplayer on the spirit board, uh, obviously brought in Piranha Plant. Do you think 3.0 is bigger? Do you think there's more lurking besides Joker and his stage and, and music? I wonder if we get, you know, Squad Strike Online or, or, you know, different modes. I don't know. Something has to happen. I, I don't think version 3.0 is only going to be like changes to the metal or anything like that. They wouldn't make this big a deal about it. So something is happening, I think. Yeah. So Well, I, I wish that Springman wasn't in as an assist trophy because the fact that they said Smash Bros. is about to spring forward, I'm like, oh my god. No, it's, that's not, it's finally no. happening. No, that's know, not what's I know, happening. I know, so, I know, I know. I just got excited for a second. I just got excited. Just got excited. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, let's talk about um, the fact that Captain Toad is the one that gets DLC. You know, we were like excited for Mario Party to see some DLC. Does Odyssey finally get its kingdoms? Nope. It's Captain Toad <laughs> seen co-op added to the entire game and a paid DLC pack of 18 challenges across five new courses. Hmm. I'm with it, man. Captain Toad is good. Apparently it sold well. They wouldn't have done this. Uh, they, they think that they can... So quite, I'm gonna buy it. I know you are because you love playing. Yeah. This, so yeah. Oh, it's cool. That's cool. I just, I guess I have massive respect that like clearly some of the teams just do whatever the heck they want. Captain Toad is a, a port of a Wii U game, and they're making DLC. Like that's just kind of awesome. Yeah. It's kind of awesome that they have the freedom to do whatever they want, and that one came completely out of left field. I wish. I gave. I wish yeah. they would have turned it. it if they would have not done this free update and this, they could have just made Captain Toad Treasure Tracker 2. It introduces mm. co-op and you stay... I, I don't know. I, I would have loved oh, it. Oh, this one's a lot cheaper, so... Sure. There, It's a double-edged sword or it's a double-edged lollipop because we still get to play cool stuff. I want to ask you, you've played the demo already. How are you feeling about Crafted World at this point? They showed a new trailer with bosses with 180 costumes. It is incredibly cute. Is it... Is it going to be something that you, you're you excited for coming end of March? Yeah, it's really fun to play, man. You know, playing through that that first stage, I played through it twice you know, for, for recording certain things. And both times I couldn't get every single collectible. So, I mean, there is some oh. challenge. It does have a more like leisurely mode. When you first open up the demo, it lets you select between two difficulty settings. Like a, hmm. one that's a little bit more challenging. It's not really challenging. And one that's like, way more leisurely. Um, okay. I, I went with the more challenging one. Again, not challenging, but still. It, it, I had a ton of fun, man. I think that it is the cutest thing in the world. I, I can't imagine too much cuter. Uh, Kirby comes close, I guess, but yeah, you know, just the, <laughs> Disney Sum Sum Festival. <laughs> sure, no, but I, I think Yoshi is of the utmost quality from what I played. It, it runs well on handheld. It looks really, really cool. You know, if you have younger siblings, kids, or whatever, this is going to be a must-have, in my opinion. Yes, indeed. Disney Sum Sum Festival, by the way, like a party game of Disney characters. I have a 
a sad amount of Zoom Zoom. So uh, I'll probably check that out in some capacity with my girlfriend. Um, new missions for Starlink? Again, the DLC today was just bananas. I don't know what they were doing. Um, Starlink is good. It sold terribly. That thing is $20 now, which, by the way, one of the biggest steals you can get for your Switch. Getting that Star Fox starter pack on Switch for $19.99, like, I would recommend that for to anybody. You're going to have $20 worth of fun. But they are adding um, this new pack that centers around uh, Star Fox. So you can play as Peppy Falco Slippy trying to take down Star Wolf's lieutenants, Andrew, Pigma, and Leon in a series of challenging missions coming this April. Yeah, I mean, that was cool. I don't have a lot to say on it, unfortunately, but I mean, it's... Great, we'll move on. Yeah. Um, Mortal Kombat 11 hitting its date is important. I think that's really good. There was a lot of worry about, is it delayed? Is it not? Europe, what's going on? It's coming day and date. That's awesome. Bloodstain, hey, that game's a thing. I know you loved Bloodstain last year. This is like the big version the the full new game did it get shit going at all nah nah i, I okay. won't get excited right. for bloodstain until it's like about to come out like that's not one of the games right. that like i'm like dying to play or anything there were a number of games that were announced that to me didn't didn't do a whole lot so i'm just gonna honestly skip over them i want to next go to astral chain which is platinum games new game this one is being directed by takahisa tora who is the uh, game designer on near automata and kamiya is supervising He's also probably heavy lifting on Bayonetta 3, so that's why. But this game looks real sweet, and I was shocked that it was given not only a 2019 date, but like an actual release date, August 30th. Yes, this reminded me of Vanquish, another Platinum game joint that I loved. And I know a lot of people really love that as well. That game like recently came to PC, and I don't say recently, but it was like last year. <laughs> this gave me all the vibes of that. I love, love, love the way this one looks. I don't know how like the story is going to make sense like the stories are always kind of oh, like probably not yeah like they're always like super <laughs> nonsensical won't. there's a couple playable characters in here one male one female it, it gave me like massive Yu-Gi-Oh vibes when they were starting <laughs> up the when Just they're like the pulling out their under, like their yeah. ar- card arm things and then linking with their uh yeah whatever those monsters it, seems are. Like it looks very cool the gameplay is going to be what stands out here right it's like inventive oh, yeah. that there's going to be like this like link system yeah i'm all about it I- how do you feel about that art style becoming very popular on Switch? It, it's something that not exactly the same, right? But it's now been seen across many games. It, it's it's interesting to me that that is becoming one of the most pervasive styles of choice for the system. I feel like it's just like easier to do. It's not it's not not yeah. realistic, but it's also not realistic <laughs> if if that makes any sense. So I, I think that's why they do it. I don't. I'm want pumped for this. Yeah. I'm pumped that they got to bring a brand new game. You know, we saw earlier today they still want to make Wonderful 101, but rather than being stuck into a port, they got something brand new. So hopefully that's cool, um, and hopefully it can live up to the pedigree that Platinum has put before them. They've, they've got mostly great stuff. I'd say some is a little bit weaker, like Transformers, Legend of Korra, that stuff not as good. Um, so hopefully this is, like you said, more of Vanquish, Nier Automata, things of that sort. Yeah. Um, let's touch on. Ultimate Alliance 3, the Black Order. No date on that guy. Coming this summer, but it is a Switch exclusive, and they emphasize the co-op today. Again, a game that has kind of a similar art style uh, as we just talked about with Astral. Are are you still just as hyped for this? I am. I am. They showed a bunch of new characters. They showed, you know, X-Men. They showed um, Storm from the X-Men, but they said X-Men are going to be in it. They said the Defenders are going to be in it. They showed Iron Fist for that. That means, Zach, that, you know, Jessica... Jones, Luke Cage, and Daredevil all going to be in it. They also sh- they showed Venom in it, and Venom's in it. I'm going to assume Carnage is in it. They they showed Captain Marvel is in it. You know, there's a brand new movie coming out, so yeah, they're going to push that. That was a, a decent part of the trailer there. I'm I'm happy with it. Yeah, I I'm not the biggest fan of the art style in general, honestly, mm, but yeah. it, it's one of the conceits that needs to happen because it's on Switch. It, it's not going to look. The, I mean, even though it could look the, the way that the old Mario, ones, Wolfenstein, all these other games say hello. Yeah, no, but. Again, I'm not happy with the art style, but the co-op looks really fun. They dove a little bit deeper into how the combat's going to work, and it is just like a beat-em-up, but it does have these like RPG elements. They talk about how you know while you're like leveling up on the fly, you gain these new abilities, and there are these like co-op abilities that all four of you like team together and use at the same time. I don't know. I think it's going to be a fun game, hopefully. Now, there's a lot that, that got you know highlighted. Assassin's Creed, very weird launch date over there. Um, Unravel 2, that's a cute get for the system. Uh, all the Final Fantasy stuff being released completely out of order is hilarious to me, but okay. Um, Delta Rune, that's nice. I I want to know if this is a problem. Is it a problem that the game that was touted as the focus of the direct 
is the one that we haven't mentioned yet. Well, that's because of you. It's not because of me. I would have mentioned it. Fire Emblem Three Houses gets delayed out of spring to July 26th, which isn't that bad of a date. Yeah. I wasn't a fan of how they sold it this time. I wish that it would have had an emphasis on gameplay instead of doing it. And I know that's just what Fire Emblem is and what, what probably what a lot of the fans want. I, I'm, a, I'm a little little soft on this one. They they always like lose me in things like this. The game I end up loving, right? But I, yeah. I'm hearkening back to uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Where they did this, this super deep dive during, during their direct, and like these names, man, like the Holy Kingdom of Falgus and the Lancaster Alliance mm. and the Merig Mock Monastery. Like, okay, you're losing. It's, it's like Harry Potter this time. Yeah, like you're a professor, you're guiding your students in battle, three different houses. I mean, like conceptually, it sounds pretty cool, but I feel like they do a very poor job of outside of the core fan base. Like that. That trailer, whatever you want to call it, like does not sell this game, I think, to a wider audience. Yeah, it's just very difficult to convey, right? Because it's going to be such a deep experience. And that's why people love Fire Emblem. They love the hardcore nature of it. They love that, hey, if you lose a a, a character, like they're like done. Like there's like permadeath in the game, stuff like that. Hard, it's a hardcore franchise. So mm-hmm. I don't know that they can go super wide appeal. I'm extremely excited for Fire Emblem Three Houses, but... Just the the information they gave us today, I'm going to need to watch the trailer like a few more times to even like, <laughs> understand what's going on. I just wish that it would have focused, uh, and I knew we were in trouble. Nothing against who, the narrator. I knew we were in trouble as soon as it switched narrators. Like, oh God, this is, we're in trouble because it was going to be super core focused. And I want to love Fire Emblem, and I probably will, like you said, gameplay wise. I just thought like to me, that was the only part of the trailer that I wanted to kind of. Yeah. I, I want to let up. you know, though. Or the you, direct. I want to let you know, you're not the only one that's making the Harry Potter references, by the way. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. I felt like that. I felt, I, I, and I say that in like a good way. Like I think it's kind of cool. I think that giving it that new slant is, is pretty fun. So, okay. A lot of games. We didn't touch on everything, but hit our favorites and, and the heavy hitters there. How do you feel about this direct? We've waited a long time. Tons of anticipation. All sorts of rumors. Obviously, Nintendo ain't responsible for any of any of the, the hearsay. But they are responsible for the big gap. Did they deliver after so much waiting? I don't know if this is the unpopular opinion this time, but I think for me they did. Okay. Zelda for me is a big one, right? Uh, I'm gonna go oh, buy. I think that's a big one for everyone. Yeah, I, but not for you. Uh, I gonna, mean, it, it might be. <laughs> I'm gonna go buy Final Fantasy IX right after we record this video. De- right. Dead by Daylight, while being a little late, is a really good game. I love that game. I think it's it's fantastic. We have Super Mario Maker. We have Marvel Ultimate Alliance. I I'm, I haven't touched it. I'm not going to speak on the quality of it. And we're not going to talk about it very long because neither one of us is super into it. But the Damon X Machina demo being out, I thought was cool. Hellblade is a really cool get. But yeah, I, I was I was happy with it. I didn't expect a ton more, honestly. You know, we'll talk about stuff that wasn't there another time. But I'm happy with it. If I have to give it a letter grade, I'd go like B minus. I think. Oh wow, that low? It, that's not low to me. I, I, I was expecting a solid A from you. You get no. your Zelda game. You get your your RPGs. You get your Marvel re- mention. You get Mario Maker Two. You get all sorts of stuff. A B minus. Yeah, well, remember, some of these things were rumored. We knew about it ahead of time, so that 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 took the like wind out of sails a bit. Okay. And I really thought I was gonna be a new two D Zelda. Like I'm not like yeah. I'm not like angry that it's C not. game C no, game. No, I would I would have preferred a new one, obviously. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, here's the deal. I think Mario Maker Two is about as strong of an opening as you can give. That like had me going crazy, and the 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 changes they made like that game is going to sell insanely well. It is crazy that that is our June game, and it's awesome that that's out of nowhere and out in four months. That's like a huge get for a Switch in a year when it also has Pokemon, now Zelda, Luigi's Mansion, and Animal Crossing. I will say that in the general structure of the Direct, and given what we expected, not even from a rumor front, I think it is very odd that they did not touch on Animal Crossing, Luigi's Mansion, or Pokemon. Now, I wasn't expecting all three, I wasn't even expecting two, but the fact that none of those got a mention, and remember, we haven't seen any gameplay for two of those, is weird. Maybe they're safe for E3, probably the case. They're all going to be, I, at this point, Q, end of Q3, Q4 releases, and that's fine. But I felt like that, it took the wind out of the sails a bit just because there's so much hype for seeing something from one of those games. And 
I did like that they brought new stuff to the table. Whether it was rumored or not, Mario Maker 2, bold, big new announcement. That Like, if you're not following r dash Nintendo Switch, like, you're super blown away by that. Box Boy, Box Girl, like, that's a personal favorite. Astral Chain, a new Platinum game. I just feel like the stuff that was announced, like, I, I don't know. Nothing hit super hard for me except Mario Maker 2. And, and the, the new Zelda is great, but like you said, I was sort of shocked that it's like an old one. I was and, shocked and we'll, that I was shocked that Mario Maker was new, by the way. I thought that was going to be a yeah. port. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I mean, the fact that there isn't a Wii U port in this list is also kind of shocking. The way that they chose the DLC games, a little weird to me. I like how they tried to put a lot out today. Um, that was pretty cool. But... I can't, I have to be genuine. A lot of this list just isn't things that I'm going to play or are interested in. The, the Final Fantasies, I really have no desire to go back to. Um, Dead by Daylight does nothing for me. Grid Autosport, not much. Dragon Quest Builders 2, like, it's cute. I, Damon X Machina, nothing for me. I've played Hellblade. So for me, it was like a direct of Mario Maker 2, mixed feelings on Link's Awakening, I, I know Fire Emblem is going to be great, but I just don't like how it was presented. And Astral Chain being super awesome, Box Boy, Box Girl being like, you know, very cool as well. So I think the highs were high, and then it kind of fell flat for me after that. So I was going to say B minus, but now I feel weird because <laughs> my 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 like explanation is far more negative than your explanation but i'm that's what i that's what i plan to say i'm gonna stick with it b minus all in all like we still know it's gonna be a phenomenal year i just think the way in which they're doing some things is a bit odd and then i don't know what we play between now and june yeah that's the tricky thing like what are we gonna do for those i mean maybe something comes maybe it doesn't but it, it is such a wide gap after yoshi like I don't know. I'm just shocked that they didn't throw like a Metroid Prime trilogy, a rumored Pikmin game, something into like a, a April May slot since Fire Emblem vacated. And, and maybe honestly, they're just facing the unfortunate pains of delays. You know, we know Metroid Prime 4 obviously wasn't meant for right now, but that was delayed. Fire Emblem needs more development time. So, so maybe they have just kind of got stuck between a, a rock and a hard place and, and nothing is ready for right now. But. The, the rumor mill says that, like, Prime Trilogy is good to go, so the fact that it hasn't been shifted, I don't know. Uh, it's I feel so weird about them having no real retail presence except for Yoshi between now and E3. I feel so weird about that. But Mario Maker 2, mega get, and I love that so much. Astral Chain is a chance to be super cool. And, hey, it's not the, the popular choice for DLC, but I'm all about the Captain Toad DLC. I'm going to go download the Yoshi demo. I love that Mortal Kombat 11 is staying day and date, and Marvel's Been Lies 3 should be pretty cool. I'm even excited, Gabriel, an mm -hmm. odd move for me. I kind of like the look of this Oninaki game, the Square Enix title that's coming this summer. Yeah, that that one was was interesting. It has to do with like death and, and like reincarnating. Like I, I don't know. I, I'm into weird Japanese things like that. I didn't bring it up because I know you're usually not into. into oh, I, yeah. Hey, hey, I'm coming around for you. And I'm. It's a summer game. Into, a lot of summer <laughs> games, dude. Like what the heck? <laughs> yeah. What for for a company that is like apologized to shareholders and said we haven't done enough. They definitely did a lot in the future, but. Man, I feel like they're going to have some some rough phone calls between now and June unless there's something else lurking. And, and probably not, but to me, the rollout is just weird. The fact that, like, we are getting Mario Maker 2 inevitably before, like, Luigi's Mansion or Animal Crossing, which were announced last year, it, it's just weird. And, and when Zelda? Do you think, like, like, a December game? God, I hope not. I hope not. September? August? I mean, <laughs> honestly, the the year is loaded. Wherever they come out, even if they're all in September, the year <laughs> is loaded. Nine games in September. <laughs> but the way that they're doing it is just, I don't understand. The plan that they have there, it honestly seems like there are a lot of structural developmental hiccups that they've hit that have caused maybe a ripple effect and a weird layout because I feel like the year... Look how committed Reggie and co. were to planning out the months, and that is not happening this year. So, it's it's odd. 
Yeah. I, I was just thinking, like, we don't expect Sony or Microsoft to put games out, like, all the time, so I don't know No, what... no, but Nintendo is carrying the platform. Yeah, sure. So it, it's it's very different when we're not getting Metro Exodus, Anthem, Far Cry New Dawn, Resident Evil 2 DLC. Yeah, of course. You know, Jump yeah. Force. None of that's in this week, so, hey. All in all, though... Directs are always a tricky situation because this one especially, it's so much. It was the hype wagon, the hype train, the hype plane, the hype the hype blimp. They were all out to party today, and I think they did a good job. I, I won't say it was a phenomenal job, but both of us sit at B- minus with really high highs. So let us know your take in the comments down below. There's a lot more to dive through here, and we'll do that in the coming days. But for now, give us your take on today's direct. What letter grade would you give it and why? In the meantime, thanks so much for watching. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest and greatest from the Switch, Super Mario Maker 2, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, Astral Chain, Fire Emblem Three Houses, Box Boy Plus Box Girl, Touch 99, Bloodstain Ritual. Okay, you get the picture. We'll cover them. Until then, though, for myself and Gabe, have a fantastic day. Switch Force, out.